<clears throat> hey, hey, hey. Just going to make a quick video. Talk a little bit about the pineal gland or the third eye. You know, a lot of people seem to be apprehensive about the third eye or don't really understand where that term came from. But it basically is just talking about the pineal gland, pineal gland, which is in the middle of the forehead. I mean, deep within the brain hemisphere, the left and the right hemisphere. It's not that big, about the size of a grain of rice, but it has a lot of um, nerve endings and vessels, and it, 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 it doesn't get its blood supply like the other glands do is kind of protected from the brain barrier it's just a gland that kind of operates on its own but all mammals and uh, mammals with vertebrae and in fact all mam mammals do have backbones and vertebrae so they have a, a pineal gland but you know when we were born, I mean, say something else. The third eye produces uh, melatonin, and melatonin just regulates, you know, your cycle with sleep compared to how much daylight versus nighttime. And if it's too much dark, it, it, it adjusts the amount of melatonin that you get, and that's what it is, a regulator. But... When babies are born, this 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 gland is it hasn't been regulated because the baby's been in darkness since conception. So that's why when they're born, they they still sleep. This this gland is not activated yet, and the third eye, we can say, is is open, and the the baby. Lou eventually loses all memory of what was going on in previous lives or his his time in the womb and in darkness. So there was a time, believe it or not, when babies used to sleep. I mean, you didn't babies didn't come here with their eyes open. They would sleep sometimes three days before they even opened their eyes and. You had to wake them up to feed them. I remember my babies, at least my second child. Oh, he slept. He, he, you had to. He was a breastfed child, but you had to really wake him up to feed. And he barely, he didn't hardly open his eyes. But the oldest one, when he was born, that's the first thing I saw his eyes, and he was looking at and trying to adjust to the light. But now, um. Uh, the evolution of the human mind and brain is is, is changed. You, you can see it evolving because babies come here are looking at you and, and paying attention and, and sound and, and they're not as afraid as they were because, I, you know, when uh, uh, babies would jump and, and bow themselves up and their fingers were tight and they were just fearful that they were going to fall. But now, my niece uh, recently had a baby, and this baby is pulling at the covers and pulling them back like I'm hot. Pulling. It was, I said, what is this baby doing? You know, I don't know. They're they, they doing a whole lot more. So, But back to the um, third eye. The, the baby... <laughs> Sleeps a lot regardless, you know, I mean, they, they, they might come in with uh, alert, but they do sleep. And when they get adjusted to the sound and uh, crying and being weird and somebody, they, they realize they can manipulate their environment with their cries. If I cry, they'll feed me. If I cry, they'll change my diaper and the things they're afraid of. But... When they are, when they need to sleep, you could put a baby in a car or walk him around the house. The, the sensation of movement activates that melatonin again, and they'll they'll go back to sleep. So, 
but as we get older, this this gland doesn't produce uh, the melatonin like it like it used to. So I used to take melatonin for a while, but what it did, it made me have the most vivid, crazy dreams. I mean, when I first started taking it, it was amazing. And a friend of mine, uh, she was taking a long bus trip um, to Detroit from Dallas, and she just was nervous. So I gave her melatonin to take on a trip. And when she got to Detroit, she called me. She said, what in the world was in that pill? I dreamed that I was driving a bus and the bus turned into a car. Just crazy dreams. So this melatonin, it, it, it does make you, I don't know, the sensation. It does something to the mind. But if you can remember when you were a child, at least for me, the dreams that I had were always vivid. I could fly when I was a child. In my dreams, I would just fly every night. It was because the melatonin that my body was producing, I, I could do that. But as I got older, the vivid dreams stopped. But that's why we, we, we seem to act like we're afraid of the third eye or opening the third eye and there are many ways you could uh, you can go buy some melatonin <laughs> and open up your third eye if, if that's what you wanted to do you could buy that and but it, it melatonin will give me it gave me real bad headaches too and my son oh the headaches were real bad but the vivid dreaming came along with it but don't be afraid of what they talk about the third eye. I mean, people are giving it too much meaning when it's nothing but a gland in your brain. And, and your body needs it. It's there for a reason. So it's, it's kind of complicated if you, uh, you have to be some kind of scientist or really into that to know what it's talking about. And we have a lot of glands in our body, and we're a complicated machine. That's what we are. But don't be afraid of the third eye. Um, don't be afraid of tarot card readings or what do they call it? Uh, tea leaves, palm readings. Uh, when I the first reading I ever got was a palm reading. This man was a priest, and I don't know. I just I, when he they said priest, we said he was a priest, and he did say voodoo, but you know, I, it just didn't register. So in my mind, I'm I'm thinking he's a priest, so that he's in the Catholic Church. And I say, oh, a black man in the Catholic Church, okay. But my my. My term, my uh, vocabulary was, was very limited then, so I got a reading from him, and it was really phenomenal. This man, he it was like me telling my story, the stuff he knew about me. And after I got that reading from him, I would go to, I don't know what you call them, but it wasn't like you driving by and you see palm readers they have these signs uh neon signs it wasn't like that but i i would go to people who were referred me from the massage therapy and i would get me a reading at least every two years just to see my direction and kind of give me some kind of light as to what direction i should take or what i should be aware of but the most accurate one besides the the black priest was the voodoo guy was the tea lady and when i whenever i get a reading somebody is with me to be a witness i i, I don't know I, I just always done that especially during the time a long time ago they didn't pre-tape uh, recorded or nothing like that so I always had a witness and 
my son or my sister was always the witness. But the tea lady, boy, she told me some things about my ex. And when I walked in, when she began the reading, we talked a little bit. And she said, you and your husband have been separated and you just went back to him. And I went like, I said, yeah. She said, this is going to be the last time that you put up with that. When he leaves this time, it's over. And I, my son and I, we just looked. And then she went up to tell some more things. She named some people that was in his life that were that were just shady characters. And then in the end, she said, he's planning on taking a trip to Florida this summer. And he will go. But when he comes back, you're going to make up your mind what you're going to do about the situation. And the reading kind of en ended, but... The things she said were on point. It wasn't, you know, a bunch of shucking and jiving. This lady, I know she's not around anymore because she was older then. But when the reading was over, she showed me how to, how she did the teas and, and how to interpret them. But she said that you talking about me could give her a reading if I wanted to and I said no I can't do that so but anyway that's that was the tea lady and I haven't had a reading from somebody else in many many years I mean many years I, I just maybe I don't want to know I I mean yeah I mean you guess your own intuition I guess if I was doing something, if I was busy, that's it. Because I was dealing with a whole lot of shady people back then. They were coming in and out of my life like, oh, you had to beware when you mingling with different energies. So that's why I would do that. But now I don't mingle like that. So I don't have to do a reading. But I do readings. And back then, God. I I did readings for people with the tarot cards and past life regressions. And it wasn't like, I mean, people, I when I realized that I could make money, I incorporated with my massage and Reiki. And to do a reading was $20 back then. That was in, 19, in the 1970s, 75, I believe. Not 70, I mean 95, 1995. But, you know, I hear people saying they'll do a reading for $5 and all that. It's no way I'd do a $5 reading. You know, if, if you're going to do a reading for $5, you might well do it for free. Because you think about, right, I'm not being vulgar or anything, but if <laughs> I knew a girl who was a prostitute and she made her money, but she hated when these young hoes would get on the block and do blowjobs for five dollars and she said they make the price of pussy go down so uh, the value of a woman's vagina uh wasn't nothing her mouth whatever she did so i kind of laughed about that i said but that makes sense and uh, when you do these these cheap nothing readings just do it for free just say let's play a game or something but don't don't be charging five dollars for that that's yeah that's an insult to people who are really in the profession and are gifted but when uh i did readings they when i got ready to Either do a massage, what they ask for, a reading or a massage. And then I would ask them about, do they want a reading? And some would say yes, some would say no. But the readings that I did that were incorporated in with the Reiki, it came while I was doing the Reiki. Because my energy, I could just, with Reiki, I, I didn't do the touch Reiki. I would just lay my hand about an inch above their body and feel the energy 
and I, that way I could read what they what was going on. But when I use my my animal cards, the the readings are so accurate until it's just it's a combination, I think, of the cards and me because if I got a different deck or a new deck, the energy wouldn't be there. This this deck is I hate to you know sound like I'm fairy telling, but the the deck that I use has is magical. So if I were no, I, I, I don't. Nah. I'm not gonna get back into reading. Nah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows what I'll do? Hmm. But it would help to be by word of mouth. That's what it have to be. I wouldn't be advertising there because, believe it or not, with my upholstery business. I didn't advertise. It was all word of mouth. So, with this, um, the, the card reading, the distant healing, Reiki, I, I wouldn't get back into the massage therapy. That's too hard on my body and my hands, but that's, that's what I would do. It would be word of mouth. So... I'm just thinking and relaxing and letting my thoughts flow. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't do no reading for $5. Just do it free. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Make the price of pussy go down. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Keep it on straight street. and Keep the prices where it need to be if you're going to charge. Be like a TD Jakes. They don't even take up five dollar offerings. I remember one time I oh they were taking up money. I mean starting off with ten thousand dollars, and that actually had people in line willing to pay. And I had my little five dollars, and they called the ten dollar people, but they did not call a five dollar offering. So I find that was years ago, so don't even hear this 2019 and you talking about five dollars. What can you do with five dollars? You can barely buy your uh, a big rolls of toilet paper for five dollars. No, no way, Jose. <laughs> Step your game up, girl. Get your money. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.